Christian church. Because of time, <clears throat> we're going to be just preaching a very short sermon today. Waiting for the Spirit. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit. Acts chapter 2, verse 4. The promise of the Holy Spirit to the disciples was realized only after many days of persistent prayer. The promise was clear and definite that the disciples should be gifted with power from on high. They had to stay in Jerusalem. The fulfillment of the promise depended on the waiting. And it is significant that it was while they were praying, resting their expectations on the surety of the promise, that the Holy Spirit fell upon them and they were all filled. The promise and the prayer went hand in hand. Thank you. Lord, that you fill us with your Holy Spirit if we rest our expectations on your promises while we pray and wait on you. Amen. Church, my text today come from um, Romans chapter 6 verse 7 still looking around for my pen here you go. just don't feel right but I have a pen somewhere around I don't know why you believe in the death of the Lord Jesus and you believe in the death of the thieves with him. Now, what about your own death, church? Your crucifixion is more intimate than theirs. They were crucified at the same time as the Lord, but on different crosses. Whereas you were crucified on the self same cross as he. For you were in him when he died. How can you know how can you know for the one uh, significant reason that God said so? It does not depend on your feelings, church. If you feel that Christ has died, he has died. And if you do not feel that he has died, he has died. If you feel that you have died, you have died. And if you do not feel that you have died, you have nevertheless just and surely died. These are divine acts. That Christ has died is a fact. That the two thieves have died is a fact. And that you have died is a fact also. Let us tell you, you have died. You are done with. You and are ruled out. The self you loathe is on the cross of Christ. And he that is dead is free from sin. Romans chapter 7, 6 verse 7. This is the gospel for the Christ, for Christ, Christians. Our crucifixion can never be made effective by will or by effort, but only by accepting what the Lord Jesus did on the cross. Our eyes must be open to see the finished work of Calvary. Some of you, church, prior to your salvation, may have tried to save yourselves. You read the Bible, prayed, went to church, and gave alms, credit, charity, sorry. Then one day your eyes were open and you saw that a full salvation had already been provided for you on the cross. You just accepted and thanked God and 
and joy flowed into your heart. And now the good news is that sanctification is made possible for you on exactly the same basis as the initial salvation. You are offered deliverance from sin as no less a gift of God's grace than was the forgiveness of sin. For God's way of deliverance is altogether different from man's way. Man's way is to try to suppress sin by seeking to overcome it. God's way is to remove the sinner. Many Christians mourn over their weakness, thinking that if, if only they were strong enough, all would be well. If we are to, if we are preoccupied with the power of sin and with our inability to meet in church, then we, naturally, then we naturally conclude that to gain the victory over sin is just, it must have more power. But this is altogether a fancy. It is not Christianity, but God means of delivering us from sin is not by making us stronger and stronger, but by making us weaker and weaker. That is surely rather a particular way of victory, you say, but it is the divine way. God sets us free from the dominion of sin, not by strengthening our old man, but by crucifying him, not by helping him to do anything, but by removing him from the scene of action. For years, church, Maybe you have tried fruitfully, fruitlessly to exercise control over yourself. And perhaps this is a still, this is, is still your experience. But when once you see the truth, you will recognize that you are indeed powerless to do anything. But that is setting you aside altogether. God has done it all. Such discovery brings human striving and self-efforts to the end. The normal Christian life, life. Church, uh, in there, and as I said, it was a short sermon. the famous day of Pentecost. On one occasion, while he was eating with them, he gave them his command. Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. Acts chapter 1, verse 4. After Christ made this promise to his disciples, he ascended to heaven. Yet the promise gave him by him to gave him of sending the Holy Spirit was not fulfilled only by his empowerment and fulfillment. The answer is found in the fact that his disciples, with the women, spent several days in the upper room and continued prayer. It was prayer that brought it past the famous day of Pentecost. And as it was then, so it can be today. Prayer can bring a Pentecostal today if there is the same kind of prayer. For the promise has not lost its power in reality. God, I know uh, that persistent, heartfelt prayer can achieve great things in this world. Please keep me on my knees. Amen. Church, if this message has been a blessing to you, find yourself a Bible-based church and become a part of the body of Christ. In Jesus' name, let the church say amen, 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 amen. God bless you.